MultiToaster.com. Hey, if you're listening to the show on our official app, then you know how cool it is. It works on Android, iPhone, and iPad. Go to aceapps.tv or our website to download it. We used Mediafly to launch our app. They specialize in media apps for large companies like TV studios and global banks. Search for Mediafly in the App Store. The list is impressive. If your company has content like video and PowerPoints and you want to put them into apps and keep them secure, use Mediafly. Go to Mediafly.com slash ace to learn more. You're listening to the Ace Broadcasting Network. From Corolla One Studios in Glendale, California, this is the Adam Corolla Show. Adam's guest today, Norm MacDonald, plus Allison Rosen and Bald Brian. And now, a man who told his kids to leave Santa a Miller Lite instead of milk, Adam Corolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. No choice but to get it on mandate. Get it on. And welcome, finally, to the podcast, Norm MacDonald. Everyone's a fan, Norm. <laughs> Why is everyone a fan of Norm MacDonald? That guy sounds hot. <laughs> oh, no. Norm, everyone I, I, loves you. I thought you. that was the intellectual property of someone else. I wish you could love you like <laughs> others love you, Norm. If you could see you through our eyes. Well, not our eyes, but I'm just talking about the fans. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> We see through it, but <laughs> yeah, no, but it's funny when people uh, recognize you sometimes for something you don't like at all. Mm. You ever have that? Oh, yeah, they go, I know you from uh, <laughs> Dancing with the Stars. Oh, Dancing with the Stars. I, I was on, no, a, you were good with uh, Dancing with the Stars. I was on, a, no, I was on it was he good? was good. He rode that unicycle like no one ever has. I was on a flight yeah. the other day, yeah. and the uh, stewardess came up to me and she said, <laughs> Norm MacDonald. Oh, my goodness. And I just sort of oh, yeah, rolled along with it. That's and, um, you know, still better than Ron Jeremy. <laughs> that guy sounds hot. <laughs> and I said, I said, no. and then later on she came up and she went, oh, my God, you're not Norm MacDonald. You're Adam Carolla. I'm so stupid. And I said, no, no, no. It happens. I'm sure it yeah, happens. Yeah. It happens to Norm with me and, yeah. and vice versa. And it's still I, better than Gilbert Godfrey. I was, uh, I was, the person was saying, I, I told the person I was did stand up, right? And they said, uh, you know, who I like is uh, I saw is the one that uh, who's the one that talks slow mm-hmm. and I said you like because you think you're a big deal and stuff mm-hmm. until you talk to regular people and I'm like I don't know who is it I don't remember he goes I, I, I go is it Stephen Wright he goes does he talk slow? <laughs> <laughs> so that's how little we mean. Right. And, and, any one of us. And this was too. a family member. So imagine, <laughs> imagine just common people. Yeah. So no, I ran into Stephen Wright, by the way. You did? Yes. Yeah, so a very embarrassing way. I was walking through with my friend. I like Stephen Wright. Yeah. And he, I was walking into a drugstore. He was walking out. And my friend goes, we're right in the in the doorways, mm-hmm. like two inches apart from each other. And he goes, she goes, look, it's Stephen Wright. You love Stephen Wright. So <laughs> I go, oh, hi, Stephen. I'm a big fan. And I go to shake his hand, but he doesn't shake hands. So then we're rubbing elbows oh, really? in the thing. And he's confused, kind of puzzled as to who I might be. Oh, he knows you. Uh, he knows you I mean, as I Adam Carolla, it... the comedian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, people do do that. You do get do you, do you get Adam Carolla because I get Norm yeah, McDonald. Yeah, 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 but I just go along with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It why disappoint the person? And it, one time I was at Acid Island, the first thing I ever did. So I was a writer, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, this guy, what's who's that guy that used to do those short movies on Saturday Night Live? Smigel? No. Uh, oh, before him. Before him, he do those sort of semi uh, serious ones. Uh, Jack Handy. Jack. Yeah, shit. Uh, it's called uh, shoot. It was they were sometimes you do them in black and white. Tom Schiller. Mm-hmm. He did sure. the one with the famous one with Belushi dancing on the. Grid, yeah, when they, they all he outlived old. all of them. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Which, so, by the way, when you do that, you have to know you're going to die in your early thirties, right? <laughs> exactly. Like, you knew that. Somehow. Yeah. But so Schiller, uh, that guy should be brought up on manslaughter charges <laughs> for shooting John Belushi as an eighty-year-old dancing on the grave of every <laughs> cast member who's now still alive. That's right. Right. So Schiller took me to this restaurant, and I was just a writer on the show, and he decided to put me in the scene, you know, for this one scene. So uh, the guy that was on the restaurant was this Greek guy, and he didn't speak any English. So mm-hmm. him and his wife had rented out the restaurant for the afternoon, so they just kept staring at me because I was mm-hmm. the star of this 
thirty second thing, mm-hmm. eating a eating a meal. Mm-hmm. And so they were all just smiling at me. And so the guy came and he was all like shy and he handed me this piece of paper. His hand was quivering for me to sign, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh my god, he's gonna have a, a signature of a person no one's ever heard of, you know? Sure, a young that, Norm that he McDonald. thinks is really important, right? So I wrote, <laughs> I wrote Paul Newman, yeah, <laughs> because I knew anyone that would come in would go, he'd go, look at this, and they go, oh wow, yeah, know? right. <laughs> they because there wasn't a picture to go there was along no with picture, it. Picture, it was just a hank- handkerchief, like a, a yeah. napkin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I've had the sign my autograph too, even though I don't know who you are, but someone else is oh, that's the signing worst. the autograph. And then I've had the drunken friend who has to keep reiterating it. I don't know who you are, but everyone at my table thinks you're a star. So yeah. I, and I was like, hey, bitch, and go yeah. sit back at the fucking right, table exactly. and shut up. And by the way, if you really... Like while they're blowing you, they're like, I don't think, I don't think you're so big. I don't think you're such a big deal. It was blah, blah, blah. My friend said you're somebody. I don't even watch TV. I don't even have a TV. I don't yeah. even care. And even if you were on TV, you think I care? I let total strangers anal <laughs> rate me at an Arby's. So you're nothing special. Yeah, I don't think you're special. Yeah. Like you, think, let, you know how you think you're so special? You're like, yeah, oh. I'll let them all use sauce for <laughs> lubricant. You're not special. I always think, all right, so you don't know me. I'm not special. Yeah. Why, are Why you here? would you come over to this table? Well, everyone told me not to bother you, but I said no. He's just a regular person. But if you really think about it, if you really did not know that individual or that human being, why would you? There'd be nothing in it for you other than Unless to be a a, drunk obnoxious. Asshole. Oh my god! What about when a guy uh, gives it, gets in a headlock and wants to put sh- give you shots of alcohol? Oh, I've got a lot of that. <laughs> I'm sure you would. But it's I, man show. Yeah, hey man show. We're doing a shot. I'm like, well, this is my grandfather's funeral. I feel this is out. All right, one shot of Jaeger, and then we're moving on to the deceased. Come on. No, I did. I, I get the. It's I get, my turn to talk next. I get the shot. That's what you said. Um, <laughs> I don't like the disposable shot. I, was I doing, like when you don't do a shot and then you're a fag. Yeah, they get all. Yeah, they're like, oh, come on, dude. And you're like, well, listen, I have to drive a school bus home with special needs kids. Go, oh, don't be a homo. Come on. Come on. Listen, I have to operate some pretty heavy equipment. We're building a hospital for kids with special needs. Oh, you're so gay. Come on. You know what I don't like? I got the shot. Is that your uh, phone? Oh, my phone. This is, this is a shocking revelation here that Norm McDonald's phone would be going off. It's probably your agent telling you to shut your phone during the podcast. Oh, you're going to talk? Well, normally, people I'm just put the them phone, on hold. This is good pod. Oh, he knows you're on the phone. Oh, yeah, He's I gotta, telling I gotta, us. i got to go. I'm on the phone. Sorry, man. <laughs> you got to go. You're on the phone? <laughs> that didn't know, sound, know, know. Yeah, it didn't sound right to the person you just nervous. hung up on. Sorry. All right, let me... <laughs> that was Steve Fromstein, a comedian. Oh, I Does know talk him. Slow? Yeah, no. <gasps> this is his best joke. He goes, I was naked in the hotel room today, you know, and uh, the maid walked in, finally. <laughs> Okay, it's funny, hot. I like that, but that, I told this on stage at Caroline's in New York, that happened to me. Remember when we were all in New York and I was blow-drying my hair and I mm-hmm. hadn't done all the locks and mm-hmm. the guy, the hotel guy walked in. Yeah. And I said, why are you leaving so fast? Yeah, it's the same joke from Steve Romstein. But you know what's bad? <laughs> it wasn't a joke, though. It actually happened. No, Go it ahead. happened to her. It's yeah. bad when you announce that somebody, where you go, this is his best joke, and then you deliver six and a half. <laughs> If I were Steve Fromstein and I was here, I'd be like, I got better than that. Come on. You can't say this is his best. It'd be like me saying, this is your best picture and you have a double chin and you're talking in the middle of it. Like, it's it's unfair to Steve. Yeah, yeah. So they, Norm, they do those pictures, and uh, they have all the pictures of every possible emotion, like in a National Enquirer. Mm-hmm. So yeah. they have shame, they have uh, right. happiness, thrilling, you know, stupid. You know in the National Enquirer <laughs> or some of those magazines where they just cut your head out and just put it in there, like you don't have your neck or your shoulders in it, they just cut your head out? <laughs> yeah. Do you know how good-looking you have to be to look good with just your head cut oh, out? God. There's right. like four people on the planet that yeah. can look good. Yeah. It's a butter it's, face's it's, nightmare. It's, Almost impossible. I don't know why. Even if they do a nice job of cutting your head out and just yeah. sticking it on a page, there's only like Brad Pitt oh, yeah, and Bradley head. Cooper, like yeah. the only two guys who can pull that shit off, and yeah. a third guy named Brad. I can't think of. So, how much right body now. do you need to look okay? You need a shoulder and a trapezoid to look. You need <laughs> like a, a Beethoven neck. bust. You need a, yeah, you need a, you need Beethoven. Yeah, I, I did a. a 
you know, they do the nothing I would hate worse than a photo shoot. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So well, it they, involves leaving the house. It does. To but be anyways, fair to Norm. So I go to the uh, I go to the photo shoot, and um, it's beside the uh, LAX. You know that fancy. Uh, it's a it's a restaurant from the future. Yeah, oh, that's right. Beside LAX. Encounters. Encounters. Is that what it's called? Yeah. So we're in the future and everything. So they said uh, they always get creative. These it was people. inside encounter. Yeah. So uh-huh. they go, uh, how about you dress like the future? I go, oh, God, I don't like future garb. Right. You know? Generally, I don't wear it. Yeah, there's no <laughs> denim. So, and then this is the thing with, uh, with um, wardrobe people. They mm. love you to put on a lot of clothes. Yeah. That's their favorite thing. That's their job. <laughs> Yeah, they're into it. And I hate putting on clothes. So anyways, I, I was on 15 different, uh, uh, you know, and people are eating. Right, you know? they right. Only, they only rent out a little part of it. Right. So I come out dressed up like a Martian, and people are eating, like, looking right. at me. And then anyway. like, look and, at Adam Carolla dressed as a Martian. What an <laughs> asshole. And, and then finally in the Entertainment Weekly, it was just a picture of my shoulders and face, and I had a Martian costume on, but you just saw the... I, uh, Norm, gold jacket. Back me up here, please, <clears throat> if you will. Yeah. Um, I've realized that this business, a lot of this business, is about putting on makeup, looking at clothes, yeah. trying on clothes, gifting sweets, stuff like that. And if you're gay, stuff that women love, or a chick, you're in fucking hog heaven. But if you're a straight dude, who doesn't really like other people smearing makeup on their face and is not excited about all the ward- wardrobe options that they've brought, right. you're fucking miserable. Right. And it's this thing where you take television and at least half of it has been ruined for straight dudes who like sports because yeah. it's fucking miserable. On the other hand, the, the chicks are fucking over the moon because think about it. You have a stylist, you have a hairstylist, a wardrobe person, you have a makeup artist. So for a chick, it's like, oh my God, every day is their birthday. And right. then the gifting suites are exactly the same. Like, oh, we got have a double-decker cat stroller that's been bedazzled <laughs> in advance for you. And you're like, I don't give a fuck about that. Yeah. This person not only has crystals that are in your zodiac sign, yeah. and you're like, I don't give a fuck about any of this stuff. But the gays who run all this stuff get pretty excited for you. Yeah. And I used to have to you're tell... You're talking about your publicist, aren't you? All publicists get excited. They're like, we got you into the gifting suite. And then you get to the gifting suite, and it's a bunch of gift certificates for for cuticle pushes and Cheer things that you don't give excited. a fuck about. And I keep telling my gays, and I'm trying to convince everybody of this, and I yeah. don't understand it. I, they would book us in these stupid hotels that just had one letter, and they'd talk about the, <laughs> the bar on the roof that was totally trendy and totally happening, and I just want to blow in, do the show, beat yeah. off, and go to bed. You know? He's yeah. gay! And I would say to him, I finally said, what if I booked you in the NASCAR hotel? You think... <laughs> Do you think I would go, oh, Alex and Lynn are going to love it because they have <laughs> Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s actual fire suit from his 1985 <laughs> points-winning system yeah. season, and then there's Rusty Wallach over there. Yeah. There's a bust of Rusty yeah. Wallach. I would know you guys would hate it right. because you don't give a fuck about Dick NASCAR. Weber. Dick Weber Dick will Weber. be showing up later. <laughs> That's right. Go- <laughs> I mean, bowling legend Dick Weber. Yes, yeah, Smokey Eunuch is going to show you how to remove uh, an extra 10 pounds from your NASCAR. Don't you... I know you guys would be miserable in that environment. Absolutely. Why don't Why? you guys apply the same math to me with the chick who's giving out the crystals? But they're clearly <laughs> getting, like, not kickbacks, but like, you know, hey, maybe we'll get a room down the road. You know, we book Adam here for a couple I nights. I don't think... The, the, from the crystal lobbyists? I like think... More from <laughs> the, the M slash W slash H hotel. Crystal lobbyist sounds like a great tech techno band. <laughs> Um, I think they open for Sonic Youth. It's hard to convince people that you don't like what they like. Oh yeah, it's like oh, yeah, a, yeah. it's like a food. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, it's like when when I find out when I found out that uh, well, pr- producer like- Angie didn't like Rainier cherries, I wanted to bust a chair <laughs> over her head. I was like, "Are you fucking nuts? This is the greatest fruit yeah. ever." Well, it's actually, it's usually the guys in bed, he's going, you like that, right? And meanwhile, she doesn't like it. Right. right. You're just saying you like it, and you're right. hoping she does. You like that, right? I hope. Well, Norm, <laughs> let's talk about you. You're single, They never bring right? it up. If you, have you ever noticed that? 
the chicks. The, the, you know, the lady never goes, I like that. You have to go, you like that. Right. And then they just, <laughs> but we will say when go, we yeah, don't like something. They nod, but it's just you taking a handful of the hair and forcing them to <laughs> nod. Oh, my yeah. Lord. Oh, well, Norm likes a little rough trade, you know. Good Lord. <laughs> Norm's quite a lady. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I mean, I just, uh... Norm, let's talk about you for a second. Well, let's um, talk about. Let's talk it about like you. You talk about anything. No, else. no. I want. I want to get to the yeah. bottom of Norm, let's and, and in onion. a complimentary way. Everyone's a big fan of Norm. <laughs> Everyone always says, "Why can't you get Norm on this show?" Everyone says you and Norm are the greatest together, even though we can't tell you apart. <laughs> Maybe that's what we like about it. That seems like a bad but, team. But Norm, Norm's a little bit... <laughs> it seems like it would be the worst team. It's like, okay, let's cast these two guys together. They're, they're, they're similar. They're exactly the same. <laughs> yeah. We'll pay them each. Norm is a, a little bit reclusive. Yes, Norm? Yeah. You uh, well, I don't drive, so I'm you living in Los drive. Angeles, so my world is small. Why <laughs> living in Los Angeles and not... Driving because like when you living become in Russia, old man. not smoking. It just doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> when you become an old man, you get afraid of learning new things. So I never learned when I was young because I didn't but, have money that I ever thought how, I'd own a car. But how about how about this? How about somebody teaches you how to drive, and then the world just when's opens the last up? time you earned learn something new? Hey, you're talking to a guy who did Dancing with the Stars. Right? Well, yeah, yeah. But, no, but I, know, I but, understand. But As you an know, adult. but you know, if you're dancing with the stars and you make a mistake, uh, uh, you know, you you won't crash, and a piece of glass won't go through your cheek. You're not going to plow through a farmer's market in Santa Monica and take out 80 people. Well, I'm not worried about the 80 people, but you're I am worried, worried about, about the broken ribs and the coughing up blood. <laughs> You know, no, wait a part. minute. Suffocating you know, on my on. own blood. Suffocating on my own blood is something that... Uh, <laughs> well, hold on a second. Dancing with the stars didn't involve. Well, let me let me explain something. First off, you're, you're, you're going to drive a car with airbags and seat belts and crumple zones. You get a nice, normal car. You learn to drive it. But what happened to the ones... Fifteen and a half year old I, chicks can drive a car. I, almost, I know that. I almost thought that uh, I get the one that parallel park by itself, but I mm -hmm. guess they don't sell that anymore or something. Does they, that not work out? It's it's getting. There was a, I think a Lexus that would do it yourself. Yeah, yeah. That that was. Um, that you, was you could see horrible mistakes being made. Well, that was all part of my apocalyptic future called Navigeddon, where the satellite <laughs> turned on everybody. So you're driving the Lexus that parks itself, yeah, right? Yeah. All of a sudden, the rogue satellite, it gets a virus, a space virus, yeah, right? Yeah. Next thing you know, you're just going to drive over to Adam Carolla's podcast, yeah. and you start trying to get off the 5 freeway, and you see the doors lock yeah. automatically, and the steering wheel you start fighting with, and then the cruise control jumps yeah. in, and you can't override it. Yeah. Next thing you know, you're heading for the Grand Canyon. Wow. Yeah, it's just going to throw all Navigate. the cars. All this the cars are going in, but guess what? Clive Owen would sign, sign up for that. Bruce Willis drives oh. a Jeep. Bruce Willis already passed? Okay. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, you know, it's all but done. I okay. spoke to Bruce, yeah. I like when people I like when people have done the, I reached out to Bruce. Like, yeah, I know, except for he never saw it, and he's never going to know. Yeah, we reached out to him. I've reached out to Bruce. He drives an old Willie's Jeep. Yeah. And he's old school. No GPS. Yeah, no GPS, but somebody's got to go up there and take that satellite down. <laughs> yeah, I see. And that's oh, going to be Oh, he's old time. He's against yeah. the, the guys in the white suits. Yeah, he doesn't He doesn't drive. Yeah. He doesn't drive that way. Everyone else is being flung into the Grand Canyon. It's interesting. I was locked into, mm -hmm. there is Bruce. Yeah. Let's, let's put him in a 50, uh, let's put him in a 63 vet convertible red four speed. Yeah, three twenty-seven small block. Yeah. Anyway, no, 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 um, no self parking, no self door locks, no cruise control, no navigating for Bruce. Yeah, you know, the, the first first half is everyone calling him old man, making fun of him for yeah, driving yeah. driving that old car. And he says, "I like the way the stick shift feels in my hand." You know, and they're like, "Are you kidding? My car drives itself to work. Right. I can shave. Yeah, yeah. I can do stuff on my iPad. Yeah. I don't even have to focus." And then people are locked in their cars and screaming and everything. Yeah, and he's looking at a compass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
That's right. And he's putting it, does that finger out? He's licking his finger and putting it out, out of the car. Yeah, he even does it move where he pulls off some grass and lets <laughs> yeah. it fall into the wind to find out which way the wind's blowing. You want to hear a great joke Bob Hope did at the Bob Hope? Is this Hope? his best joke? It's the funniest thing I ever saw him do. All right. He was at the Bob Hope uh, golf tournament, mm-hmm. and uh, he uh, picked up some grass, and he threw it up in the air, and mm-hmm. it floated a little, and he said, Caddy, give me my sweater. <laughs> 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 Except for the cat he wrote him that joke. I yeah, bet. Of course. But still, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, of course. All right, let's get back to Norm MacDonald. So, Norm, you start off in uh, Canada at what age? When, when, did, when, when does the zero. comedy you start off at zero? <laughs> yeah, it actually makes sense. And then when, when does the comedy bug bite Norm MacDonald? Uh, it didn't really. I mean, because I, when I was young, I didn't think there was, because uh, in Canada, there's nothing except mm-hmm. hockey. And then. Uh, did uh, you play hockey? Yeah, but you cu- can skate. I can skate. You can skate backwards. <laughs> sure, sure. You can do that thing where you go and make that spray. Yeah, yeah, that, sure, sure. But you can can't you do drive. The fancy backwards where you make one leg cross over yeah, the other of one. Yeah, yeah, you can do oh. that. But, every, but you can't every drive. Guy can do that. You can't drive a car. No, but, but you we, can skate well, backwards learn when you're, at speed. When you learn when you start when you're three. Mm-hmm. But uh, um, the bad thing about it is you don't learn any other sports. Just hockey. So uh, you try to learn something when you're old. It's hard. No, and I, and I re- get that theme. What? We get that theme yeah, in your yeah. life. Well, I, I, learned... I could teach you to drive, Norm. <laughs> Norm, <laughs> I here's my okay. c- contention. But you drive fast cars. Do you have any slow cars yes. where you don't press? Let's let's can, can where we... you don't press the Norm the the, the, the gas a little bit. You could and borrow then all my of a Honda. Sudden, I'd like to help you, Norm. You're racing a man. Uh, like I don't want to be in the, in the <laughs> position where I hit. I'm at the red light and then I hit the thing and then I look over. And there's a guy, black guy probably, it doesn't matter what right. color he is. No. He feels I'm in a race with him. Right, a race war. So <laughs> because I have... I, mm-hmm. a race right. War. right, right. Well, he was black <laughs> five minutes ago. Norm, I think you would not... Because I say yeah. black because this happened to me eight days ago. I was driving down the street. You were driving? Giant, you were I mean, driving? I was in the passenger seat. And right. a giant, the biggest car truck you've ever seen. You would know what it is because you're into cars. Mm-hmm. The ones that's almost a truck. It's a big SUV, but the but the tires are so giant, mm-hmm. it's six feet taller than mm-hmm. you. And mm-hmm. I looked out and looking down at me, it's odd when you are terrified by a celebrity, a rich yeah. celebrity. Mm-hmm. But this was Suge Knight. Oh, yeah. So yeah. most rich celebrities are targets. Right, right. <laughs> you figure, hey, I beat that guy he's, up. He's the arrow. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's, he scares you. Well, to be fair, he's a ce- he's known for he's a celebrity because he beats people up and yeah. intimidates people, yeah. and he's so massive, and he was in jail and all that kind of and stuff. And he was well, the place I used to live uh, when he got out. They had a big giant. They had a giant. Uh, oh, look, there oh, he there is, he is. In his giant truck. Yes, <laughs> you I rarely see that. black guys uh, alter the rims on their vehicles. I this is interesting. Uh huh. <laughs> so. Um, so mm-hmm. I, but when he got out across from where I used to live, uh, mm-hmm. there was a big giant billboard saying "Welcome back, Suge." Oh yeah, like yeah. on Wilshire or something. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Wilshire and La Cienega. Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, that's where I used to live, right near where mm-hmm. where Suge and I, got I, out. I don't want to burst your bubble, but that was a French guy named Serge. You just mispronounced well, no, it. A, a lot of guys, like a, a lot of white guys, if they go to prison, it's pretty well over for them. Mm-hmm. And also, a, yeah, lot, black guy. a lot of white guys, when they become rich and successful, mm-hmm. they give up uh, being a pimp <laughs> yeah. or carrying firearms, anything that's yeah. illegal. They go, well, I got $50 million. I may yeah, as yeah. well play it safe now. Yeah, it's it's interesting. <laughs> Tim Allen sort of lived down the part where he was dealing coke yes, <laughs> once he amazing. got because into the remember, Santa Claus. It came, right? It, but it was before he did the sitcom. It came out. Yeah, right that's before. what I'm saying. Yeah. But but Tim Allen didn't walk around going, "Who needs some blow? I'm a player." <laughs> right, mm-hmm. right. He sort of somebody said, "Put on this flannel shirt. Right. Let's not talk about the right. kilos of cocaine you were caught with in the '70s. I let's think, let's live that down." I think Snoop still says he's a pimp. Like he's still a pimp as well as a. You know what it's mogul. like? It, it, it's it's interesting because yeah, for the brothers you get street cred, right. and for Whitey we we're somewhere between scared and amused. You know, where we just yeah. kind of laugh it off, but no one's going to get involved. I'd like, be a like, bad pimp. Like you be my girl. All right, you, uh, you, uh, you uh, be my. You two be my girl. Yeah. All right. I'm going to turn you. In, uh, okay, listen, girls. I got to talk to you. Yeah. Okay. Hey, mm-hmm. hey, Sir Magic Norm. Listen, I don't yeah, like. Uh, you guys have had attitude against me. Um. Well, mm-hmm. I just feel like we. You've been taking a lot of our money. A lot of you have not been paying me. What? 
Hmm? Huh? You know I have the knife. I know you guys have never seen it. Uh-huh. But I've to- I, I'm the ones that found you at the bus stop and let you sleep on my couch. Yeah, that was much of an upgrade. I <laughs> Especially like your more constant like raping. Futon. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I had a good night that was rape. part of the deal. I thought that was the unspoken... But anyways, Look. I want some of the money. Look, it doesn't have to be 90-10. I don't know. I, yeah. understand, I understand the 90-10 was a little usurious on my part. But have a 50-50. You get mm, to sleep here. Cheryl, what do you think? I don't think so. I don't know. It's I have, You know I really have a knife. The cost of living for I, 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 I'm starting up. to think you guys don't believe I, I have the knife. I haven't seen your knife. But you've heard stories. Well, only from you. That I cut that girl? That's a yeah, true story. I wasn't I, making that up. I talked to Cindy. Oh, you know so you've met Cindy? Yeah, she said She's you never... She's a liar. She said you never... Cut her. She's she a said liar. she got in a she car accident. Talk. That's where the scar yeah, came she from. She said you talked about the knife all the time, I but could she get never saw knife. the knife. I could buy That's a what knife. she said you said to her. Yeah, mm-hmm. I could buy a knife. Easy. I know oh, people. Oh, well, now you got to buy a knife? I know people. <laughs> Hold on. You said you had a knife. You have a knife, but it's in a catalog? I know people that could get me a knife illegally. Well, that, that couldn't like, even be traced. I'd stab but you. But it's like me saying I have a swimming pool, but it's at someone else's condo. What, you used to be afraid of me. I'm not. Well, you don't even have a knife. You just said you could buy a knife. You used to be so afraid of me when I threatened you. Know, you know, you said you'd beat me with a car antenna, but you're, you don't even have a car. You drive a Geo Metro. That's not a pimp car. <laughs> you want to go to a bad guy? <laughs> I thought you were badass. I've never hurt you. But listen, my I've st- protected you from my everybody. My stepfather prote- beat me. And I've that's protected why you. Haven't I protected you? Except for the I two times. A, you Except promised- for the two times. All right. And those guys were big. All right. But you <laughs> promised to beat me, and that's why I was attracted to you, because of the history I have with my stepfather I know, and the I physical get abuse. I get uncomfortable. But I push you. Yeah, I, I you're don't treat pushing. You, nice. you, you pulling lint off my sweaters, not a push. I said the other night that your 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 lasagna was undercooked. <laughs> yeah, I know, but so you like so I gave you, and then that's because I gave you a middle piece. When I gave you an end piece, you said it was delectable. And that thing you do where well, you lick your true. finger to wipe the stains off our faces, we don't like that. Yeah, we don't like the smudge thing. I've become too close. Look, we didn't get into this not to be beaten or threatened or to keep ninety well, percent of our booty. I, how, how often do I mentioned the knife. All right. And you reminding us to use condoms and to say thank you. Mm-hmm. And you telling us we don't have to do what we don't want to do. Yeah. What it's do not mean? helping our what, business. Yeah. What, well, you don't have to do any of this stuff. Listen, unless the guy, unless the guy's big, I'll, I'll, I'll protect you guys. If I can take the guy. Remember you when you I mean? invited us I'm to not gonna stay, stay oh, with your knife? I'm you, not going to stab. No, I'm not going to stab a guy. Well, you invited us to stay you know on I mean? at your at your. Sometimes he's just doing weird stuff, but it's not that weird. Uh, but let me say this. You're you working out of your mom's house is awkward. <laughs> For both of us, okay? Yeah. And sure, she's a delight, and she makes a great and rum pudding. And nobody's mentioned but, anything, right? This is a complete well, secret. Well, your mom, I mean, look. Let, let's. First off, you wearing dockers and flip-flops is no outfit for a pimp. We're going to have to get you, like, made over. You drive a Geo Metro. You keep threatening your pimp hand, but you never laid a hand on either one of us. You're not verbally abusive. You're not physically abusive. I laid, by the way, the first two nights I spent on your mom's sofa. I slept with no underpants on presenting. I didn't. I wasn't raped once. You came by two times. You offered me milk when you went to the kitchen. And then another time you offered me postum. I don't even know what that is. Uh, <laughs> You're just a bad pimp. <laughs> Thank you. The bad and pimp. Scene. <laughs> and scene. Thank you. This is about the most interesting reenactment I have ever been a part of in my life. <laughs> you know what made me think that of was bad you know pimp. what I you know what I started to think of Norm when you're talking about like it's the classic radio. The brothers arguing over like where how bad their neighborhood was, and yeah. then the other one would out the other one by saying, Hey, you grew up in Brentwood, man. And the guy's like, I lived in an apartment. <laughs> like that to keep going about how shitty their yeah, neighborhood yeah, yeah. is. If you go you know, it's funny. If you go to an old diner and you see the pictures of the old celebrities, yeah. now if a celebrity smokes, they have to go out to the back of the auditorium yes. and like hold, have someone hold their jacket up and sort of, you know, pretend. And so no one gets a picture of them yeah. smoking. Yeah. Back in the old days, when they took pictures of celebrities, they would just hand them a cigarette. Like, there's uh, pictures of Shirley Temple yeah, yeah. just <laughs> holding a cigarette. Like, they all had cigarettes. Yeah. It didn't matter who they were. And I'm sure some of them smoked, but not all of them. Oh, I see, just to make them look glamorous. So they would actually <clears throat> hand them a cigarette. 
versus now, if a guy did smoke, they would always tell him, yes. put that cigarette out before he took the picture. They would do com- the ads. It would be like, uh, mm-hmm. William Bendix likes <laughs> That's Chesterfields. That's exactly who I was going to say. <laughs> Speaking of ads, how about Pro Flowers? Oh, Norm. And this I know is, Pro Flowers. This is perfect for you. you I've don't, used you, it. You don't leave the house. I've used Pro Flowers. That's why you want to use Pro Flowers. Is that William Bendix? <laughs> wow. Pro Flowers. They got a lot of great holiday Pride deals. Pride of the Yankees. And and you don't have to you don't have to leave your place like Norm. You don't have to summon your driver. That is why I use Pro Flowers. You do, don't you? 800 Pro Flowers and you mention Ace and they give you a deal or you go online, you go to proflowers.com, you click on the microphone in the top right corner and you type in Ace. That's right. Oh, that's uh, Shirley Temple. And Charles G. Black. Is Shirley Temple smoking? Oh, she is smoking. Oh, that was fast. You yeah, nice. nice Norm, job. who have you sent flowers to? I'm, uh, who have I sent flowers to my mother every, uh, every Mother's Day? Pro flowers, using pro flowers. I use pro flowers. Uh huh. She likes them. She mm-hmm. enjoys them. Mm-hmm. Is, she, is, she, is she a fan? She loves what, uh, flowers or pro flowers? Of, of Norm MacDonald. When I first did Letterman, my mom phoned. Mm-hmm. First uh, TV I ever did, and she was mm-hmm. very proud of me because of my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What did What did your shirt say? It brought out my eyes. <laughs> ah, you do have piercing blue eyes. So, uh, and then my father, my mm-hmm. father said, uh, "Did you meet? The, did you get to meet that guy with the potatoes?" The potatoes? Yes, there was another guest on the show that night mm-hmm. who had potatoes. <laughs> you trying to say potato? A potato. <laughs> That looked like. Hold on, do you spell it differently? A like po- the what, what did I like say? the English spell. He says aluminium. potato. We say potato. You say but what, I say potatoes. What do you say? I think that worked now. Yeah. Uh, say, uh, say badminton. Badminton. Okay. Good. Potatoes. It worked. <laughs> well, you got say, me thinking of the words. Work so potato much. and badminton into the same sentence, if you could, for one second. My dad look. said, uh, "Did you meet? Did you get to meet that guy with the goddamn potatoes?" <laughs> so I was like. Yeah, so there was another guest that had odd-shaped potatoes. Uh-huh. Like, one of them looked like LBJ or something. So, uh-huh. Stuff like that. But he was, like, Letterman's third guest. I was mm-hmm. the second, you know. I mm-hmm. didn't, but, uh, and there was another guy my dad didn't know, like, the mm-hmm. Woody Harrelson was the right, right. guest. Or something. But my dad was like, uh, that one goddamn potato, that looked like... Uh, <laughs> That looked like a, a, a cat if I ever saw a guy. Do <laughs> so your, your dad simply focused on the guy with. The he potato. thought he was by far the most entertaining guy on the yeah, show. Yeah, he didn't focus on you, his own son. <laughs> no, on Letterman. But that's okay. He, that's he, he, was, my he, he was he was impressed that I would get to meet the guy with the potato. <laughs> He's a withholder. He's withhold. No, he, he withholds he, love. No, he truly believed that. Oh, so he doesn't love you. No, he truly believed that I would be impressed to meet that guy with the potatoes. He was envious of me having the chance but, to meet that guy. Well, so how was it meeting it was the guy sweet. with the potatoes? I never met him. But I don't he talk sh- to those losers. He oh. should have. But I'll sh- tell you, when I was on Star Search and Lost, mm-hmm. we have the same man. We had the same manager. Uh-huh. But I was on Star Search. I lived in Canada. It was the first thing I ever did. Mm-hmm. And they said, come to America. My manager said, you'd be on Star Search. I say, I hate that show. Uh-huh. They go, wow, look at Norm. That was fast. Yeah, you look like a coat hanger holding up. The, yeah, the, the that was my David coat. Byrne. Yeah, coat. it's a good luck. Yeah, and and so I went to. It, it was called International Star Search. I said I'm not going to do Star Search. And my manager goes, No, it's International Star Search. It pays. There's only you against two other guys. It pays a million dollars. I said a million. So I'm like a, a million dollars. I go, Okay, I'll do it. It paid five thousand dollars, <laughs> and it was just a. It was, <laughs> it was part of Star Search, but it's called International Star Search. Nobody watched it. It was me against a guy from Africa, mm-hmm. and another guy from Australia. The guy from Africa wore African robes, tribal robes. Sure. The guy from Australia wore um, <laughs> a safari outfit. Really? And I wore what you see on the screen. <laughs> yeah. A, a suit. Yeah. Well, that's, so, that and, is our... And I had our, no our... jokes about Canada, and the, the guy from Africa was like, I have to hunt my meal. Right, right. And then I go out, I'm like, anyone have an answering machine? Nothing to do with right, Canada. Right, Because <laughs> <laughs> international. Is so it... I got no laughs. Oh, I, I, I think that's mathematically it's, impossible it's for true. Norm MacDonald not to get a laugh. Can I say this? Is I, it, but I will yeah. tell you a fun thing that happened with Please. Ed McMahon. I, Ed McMahon. I bombed. You only got three minutes. Right. So if you if you're a minute in and you're not doing well, it's pretty, pretty much over. Right. Right. You're not going to save it. You know. Right. Those all three minutes have to do well. Sure. And at one point, as a matter of fact, I looked over at Ed McMahon 
everyone didn't like me. And I looked over at Ed McMahon for the first minute. They liked, they warmed up to me in the second mm -hmm. minute. But in the first <laughs> minute, I looked over to Ed McMahon, kind of worried. He lost him again. And he was third. glaring at me. Really? This is Ed McMahon who uh -huh. laughs professionally. Right, he's a professional laugher. <laughs> right. He, he's taking some time off. <laughs> sure. So uh, I, <laughs> I finish. Now I know I've lost, you know. But I decided it'll be fun to stand next to Ed McMahon and, and just because I'll feel like Johnny Carson. Uh -huh. And so they tell you beforehand, they go, you know, they don't know what uh, Ed's going to ask you. Ed could ask you anything, you know. Right. So uh, Ed goes, uh, he just pretends everything's fine even though I didn't right. do well, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he, goes, uh, he goes, Norm, you're from Canada. He goes, tell me, what do you find is the difference between Canadian audiences and American audiences. So I go, uh, Potatoes? <laughs> I go, I think American audiences have better shoes. You know? So then he genuinely laughs because it's so retarded. You right. Know? So he's like, ah, ha, ha, ha. He's all confused. Right. And then, uh, then he goes directly to commercial. I wish I had this. He goes directly to commercial and he goes, uh, we'll be right back with the international spokesmodels. Oh, yeah. Shoes. <laughs> He just said shoes. He just said the word shoes. <laughs> yeah. So you, did, you, you he lost. He showed up a minute. Yeah. We, I lost, and it was international stars. There. So afterwards, you're relegated to a room right. with the international losers. So there's sure. a Venezuelan children's singers. Sure. <laughs> all sad because it was their only hope of a, a green right. card. A better life. Yeah. And you. <laughs> so, so, Norm. Uh, let's get back to you in the driving for a second. Yes, sir. Uh, and are, are you are you reclusive? Do you feel like you know? Because we all Another know. Part, we could... By the way, just as an excuse of how badly I did on Star Search, a full eighty five percent of the audience were uh, members of the other families, and they were before spoke yeah. no English. Oh yeah. Okay. So about the yeah. driving. Yeah. You want to teach me how to drive? Yeah, I'd like to teach you how to drive. If you have a car that is a is a safe, very incredibly safe car, like a Volvo. Well, well, let's let's first off. I pretend I'll get you're you a safe, teaching an old lady. I can get you a safe car, but let's just think the unthinkable happens and Norm perishes. Oh Jesus Christ! What do we way to get him to agree to? I this. mean, are you talking about what's your liability? Probably no, everything. I'm saying as far as society impact goes, I would say you would have to. Uh, take care of my child for the rest of his life. All right. How old is he? He's 19. Oh, well, he's got another year and a half, and then I'm cutting him loose for the no. rest of his life. So when he's 40, he's a, I got to... He's a bum. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> is he? No. He's a bit of a scapegrace. Uh, a scapegrace. Oh, wow. I like. Is that like a ne'er-do-well? It's, it's like a never-do-well. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Is he a what, rapscallion? What is he... Yeah, what is he doing? Uh, who? My son? Yeah, it's his son. <clears throat> my son goes to college. Is he is he in the States or is he in, in States, Canada? In the okay. States. Where does he go? Uh, he to, I don't want to say where he goes, but mm. he goes to a nice place. And, uh, he, you're a smart guy, so he must have I never went to well. college. Yeah, but you're uh, you're a mathematical genius. I but, I'm from bit, gambling. I never went to college. Like never, drug I, dealers I, I, know I the never, metric system. I, you know, I never went to much to high school. Not, not, and never, but not but you know you're a high IQ guy. Uh, I don't believe in IQ that much. All I, right, but I, I just know I, I know that uh, a lot uh, more people. I mean, I, people always know way more stuff than me, so I don't. But know. Norm, what? We we let's get back to the driving. I think my son's for a smart though. Yes, I, I think I think you're a little bit of a recluse. I'm recluse, and it would open up my world. It would, but only if you wanted your world opened up. But I don't think you want your world opened up. What are you, fucking Mark Maron? Yeah, why don't you want your <laughs> world opened up? Like, you could drive places. It would be awesome. You hated when I said that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. He's so amusing. We could have been that funny on that International Star Search. Ah, maybe, maybe you have a career. I lost to a guy who now... This is funny. Yeah. I lost to a guy who now hates my guts. He's, he wasn't really from... He, he was from Africa. Mm -hmm. But he was actually, I think, from Seattle. Oh really? But uh, he he's posted YouTube's where he's <laughs> why is he in your like, guts? He's posted YouTube's. They posted YouTube's of him like watching me on the Tonight Show and going, "I beat that guy, man, Norm McDonald. He knows it, man. Oh, I'm the Bush man. I lost. Yeah. I lost to the Bush man. I, I get it. So it, it's sort of like a guy who beats Muhammad Ali in the amateur ranks. And then just goes on to be a tomato can. But when Muhammad Ali is world champion, you get to yeah. sit around drunk at a bar and go, I beat that dude. Although I, I you're would, not Muhammad I would, Ali. Yeah, but yeah I understand. Bul Jerry Bulger. Right, yeah. I'm George Shavalo. 
<laughs> wow, that's a good. <gasps> see, you're smart. These are all these are all middle of the road heavyweights. <laughs> yeah, I'll put you in a Randall Tex Cobb because I'm yeah. feeling generous. <laughs> all right, he was a better actor. I had. He is a fine actor. I, if if anyone saw Raising Arizona. Yeah. I did uh, I did Letterman and was on before James Brown the first time I did Ooh, Letterman. Wow. And then the last time I did... Uh, I the, feel good. Oh, here's fun. a guy. Last time I did The Tonight Show, I was on before Neil Diamond. So I got wow. that going. I get to be that fat guy in the bar going, I was on before. I led before ah. Neil Diamond. I led before <laughs> James Brown. And by the way, no one can have James Brown come out in front of me ever again. Yeah, exactly. impossible. Is this guy, do we have this guy's rant? No, McDonald. Norm? I'm not afraid of you. If you want us to get into a comedy bout, comedy I would bout. take you on anywhere in Canada, in London, in Australia, in LA, on the beach. The world it is clamoring for this. I am not afraid <laughs> of you. This is like Pacquiao and Floyd million. Mayweather Jr. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. I'm going to knock you out with all your millions. You millions? Come talk he thinks I have you. millions. Oh, yeah. Let's get it on, dude. It's 5,000. I want to go to battle. I want to fight you, man. You know why? Because you got millions of dollars. I ain't got shit, man. Look at me, dog. Look at me, dog. I'm broke, dog. I ain't got shit. And you not funny, motherfucker, man. Look at me. Ed me, well, it's an acquired taste, but You've I would been say making it's funny. Millions of dollars, oh, and people think you're funny. I'm laughing. And you're you not brought not up funny. Ed McMahon. I know that. Let me say, so. I beat you, motherfucker. <laughs> How do you? You know? It's so sad what happened to Garrett just, Morris. Oh, no. Garrett Morris is a regular on a TV show. Uh, a famous one. A oh, big hit. Last time I saw... What show? Because the last time... Big I saw, hit that's going to be on 10 years. Last time I saw <laughs> Garrett Morris, he was like, Hey, man, can I talk about my magazine on my radio show? And I was like, you, a you have a magazine? And he said, I'm thinking about starting one. And I said, <laughs> about what? And he's like, I don't know. What do you think? And I'm like... How much pre-press do you want to do for this magazine that you haven't sorted out yet? <laughs> I just think it'd be cool to talk about it. I'm like, but I don't know what it's about. And he's like, I don't know either. What do you got? And I thought, Jesus what you Christ. Got? He's what insane. What do you got? He's been... One time I met Andy. He's been shot eight times. I know, Mick, I know yeah. So I, so I you know, cut Showed him some leg. slack. What show is he on? I think he's insane. Saturday Night Live? Norm... I think that Garrett Morris is insane. He was on. Two, he's on Two Broke Girls. I'll be oh, is he? That's going to be. Does a he chance. know he's on that show? <laughs> I don't think Garrett's insane. I got no my goal is to. Inter you want know, you know, you know my goal? Oh, Tell yeah. me if you think this is a good goal. Mm. All right. Go well, ahead. never mind. Tell, it's no, about tell being, me. It's about doing a podcast, but I think it's a secret. I think it's a good idea. What? No, I'm I saying, think you should do a podcast. I want to interview all members that have ever been on Saturday Night Live. That's a really good idea. I th I'm pretty sure Mike August could book Jan Hooks, <laughs> but that's where he stops. <laughs> that's what he told me. Yeah. Hey, uh, speaking of Garrett cars Morris, and, and Norm not being able to drive, Norm, if you did drive, you'd need nice tires on your car. I would love nice tires. Nice, good tires. Discount tires. Best tire. tires I have ever heard of, but you go ahead. You Is that so Jan Hooks? Oh, man. Discount Tire and America's Tire. Yeah. They got a Facebook contest. Our friends uh, over there at Discount Tire have a deal for you. you they'll, they'll bring you out to uh, L.A. for the weekend, and they're here to meet me. Norm won't be here because he doesn't drive. Includes round-trip flights for two. Two nights at a uh, nice hotel. 500 bucks uh, spending money. Plus, tickets to the uh, Peterson Automotive Museum. You can go uh, visit my mirror over there. It's up on a nice uh, platform. And a uh, behind-the-scenes tour of the shop here. See the shop, see the studio, see all the car stuff. Do they have, do they have white walls? They have white walls. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can get white walls. They'll get you anything. They got me my race tires. Enter at Facebook.com slash discount tire, or you can go to our site if you want. Facebook.com slash discount, discount Tire, and then uh, we'll bring you out here. Hang out, and uh, they'll give you some money. It's a great contest. Norm, so back to you. Let's be serious for a moment. Do you want to break out of your shell? <laughs> By we, driving a car? Yes. Well, I think a driving a car would probably break me out, of, make my world so much larger, so much faster. Would you like that, though? Yeah. I, I know it's a scary proposition. I think I would. I mean, I'll tell you what scares me most about driving, honestly. Mm-hmm. Uh, parking, like when I'm in, w even with a person, and we're mm -hmm. in a, uh, a downstairs place. What's it called? A garage. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, everybody's like jockeying, and then there's no laws, right? Like you know, it's what I mean? lawless. Yeah, yeah that, once in a while you go against I get traffic. Scared, yeah, I get scared. With, I I don't know how I would deal with that if all of a sudden it was like ah, uh-uh, and they're honking, and I'm like in a downstairs th- place. Right. I think I might bolt and run away and leave right. the car. I yeah. always want to do that. Illi- yeah. illegal. I think it's illegal. Yeah. I am like Norm, but I actually drive. Right. You can tell if you look See? at my car because there's scratches all over you, it and you, dents and you, things. You go through it. You, can we? Norm, can we, can I teach you to drive? You know, first off, not only do I have a a license for vintage racing, but I also used to teach traffic school. Oh, you did? You taught, you taught, does that mean teaching driving or just rules? Well, technically more the rules, but the driving part, I know because I've been through a lot of driving school. Well, I would definitely, I would never (laughs) take a lesson if it was a joke and you scared me or something. No, no, I would never do that. Because I would kill you. No, you would freak out. Yeah, no, I don't want that. You'd go, you'd go nuts. But like, also, there's not only me perishing. Mm-hmm. There's you. Like unless you have your own, unless you have a, a, a car. I feel confident with you. For those guys that teach, have cars where they have the actual power, they can. Let, let me tell you something. I did a car show recently, where I got a chick who could not drive a stick shift. Now they edited it up in a way that was uh, sort of unamusing. But the reality was, is I got a chick, an actress chick who'd never driven a car before, who, who didn't know how to drive a stick shift. And I put her behind the wheel of a 600-horsepower Dodge Viper with a six-speed and a really tough race clutch. And I taught her to drive through these cones and do a circle and come back and parallel park. But she knew how to drive, like 50 an, a, she knew how to drive an automatic. She knew how to drive an automatic, but That's operating a, a stick shift with a 600-horsepower vehicle and a stiff clutch is In tough. Stripper shoes. But it's and, not as hard as going from zero to... No, I think it is. I think it's harder because oh. this is just... I, and I used to teach boxing, too. I can teach. I'm a good teacher. You are, really? I'm a great teacher, Norm. I would like... To teach you, because I'm looking at this as symbolic. It's more than just getting your driver's license. This is symbolic. And by the way, you wouldn't even have to get your driver's you know, license. It would make my son proud. I was. What, would he like that? Yeah. And it would, it, it, do you see what I, you see? The symbolism here, right? The symbolism, no. That it, For the freedom. Yeah. The it'd be, it'd be well, norm- I understand the symbol, the symbolism of a car in America. No, 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 Norm. Please let me let me talk here <laughs> okay. for a second. I will. There's an emotional component to this. Yeah. I can already see you're uncomfortable by what you feel no. like is an intervention. Relax. Just relax. There's, there's <laughs> Not a, an intervention. I'm pushing as you would a car if it was... Yeah. You, you know what He's you're braced. doing? You're doing what people do in a it's dental... It's bracing. What people do in a dental chair when they're getting their teeth cleaned. That's your, <laughs> that's your posture. Now, listen to me. This is an emotional issue. It's not can you drive or can't you drive. Everyone knows I could teach you to drive in 20 minutes. That's not the issue. <laughs> no, no, okay. I do know that. This is an emotional <laughs> issue, Norm. Are you willing to trust me? Do you want to take a step or do you just want to be, you know, bathing in your own urine oh, for the rest of your life? Gosh. Are you do you want to These take are the that options? <laughs> first step out of that apartment and in and in toward toward the light? Would you like to take that step? Would you like me to help you? Take that step. Do you have like uh, an earpiece and Dr. Drew is talking through you? <laughs> it's an ass piece, but yes, it is Drew's voice. <laughs> Whatever. Fine, I can hear him better that way. I would agree to it do that. It doesn't show I would up agree on camera. To, I would agree to do that. I mean, I might, Would you agree to do that? I agree, but I might say no later because <laughs> it scares <laughs> me. That's the hey, right now, baby step. No, right now, step. right now, in your thrall, I feel like I could do it. Norm. Like you're very. Per- Persuasive, but, but, but please, and please, I believe you. Please, and also since your life's at stake, I know that my life is at stake. But also, you it would know. be the day comedy died if you drove off a cliff with you <laughs> and I in it. <laughs> Except for all the other funny people that you left behind. Yeah, until they cast Dana Gould as Death. Yeah, and then we'd yeah. be forgotten. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it'd be the day Death died. Oh, wait a minute. All right, so listen, Norm. I would like to do this for you. And I know you find it. You see, this is, this is an emotional issue. It's not a practical issue. No, Obviously, I can teach you to drive. No, It'll I, be safe. I know intellectually because I see old ladies and young children. Yeah. Like you say, I see every other person. Right. So I go, well, I'm not. Right. Yeah. yeah, they have handicapped people drive vans with their teeth, Norm. <laughs> you don't think you can handle it? Yeah, no. We could, I could teach you to drive. Let's do that, Norm. Okay. Let me offer you that freedom. Well, let's, uh, let's for now say yes. <laughs> But I don't want to. But we the can't. Make, this is the Why can't but, I? But I got to say this. I got to say this. If we do it, it cannot be in, in any way as a comedy. But all of a sudden, I can't go. You can't go. Here is Norm. Put on this suit. And I'm like, no, wait. And then you were at a racetrack Norm. in Ventura. 
And uh, I would treat- I'm racing against Gilles Villeneuve's son. Yes. <laughs> Jacques. <laughs> Jacques. Jacques. Um, uh, F1 driver. Listen, sure. point is this. First off, I would treat you... Because I've had that before where they've gone... This is what my manager said. Do you want to be in a celebrity race car event? I go, no. I don't have a license. And they go, the funny thing is, they'll never think to ask. I... I <laughs> That's what my manager tells me. You know how I would treat you? I would treat you like a horse that I rescued who'd been abused. Uh-huh. That's how I would treat you. Do you know what I mean? Lots, you'd, no sudden movements. You'd whack Lots me out. Lots of petting on New the shoes. <laughs> you'd whack me out. Just to relieve a little pressure. <laughs> Nothing gay. Cock. Just to take the edge off. I'd feed you a carrot through my mouth. <laughs> no, I wouldn't move. I wouldn't light off any fireworks. Oh, I yeah. wouldn't do any. I, I, I would you. be very soothing. I'll would put, you I'll make put, me... I'll, I'm going to put the best of Enya in the CD player for oh, Lexus, no. and I'm going to teach you how to drive Norm McDonald. Would you make me, uh, would you and your lady be in the back while I pulled you? Yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Around yeah, the park? In, in an open sleigh. <laughs> yes. I, I'm going to teach you how to drive, Norm. Oh, but yeah. again, we'll try. We'll do the No, no, do this, this, I but need it a can't commitment. Be comic. That's no, all, it won't be if comical. If it's not comedic, I'll do it. It will not be funny. <laughs> okay. That's a guarantee from him. I mean, it can be unintentionally right. funny. This is what you're going to hear. No, I don't want to see. Sickle. Like, I'm in the middle of the drive, and Sickle. all of a sudden, I, I don't want to see John Lovitz with a no. knife come from the back no. seat. Ah, ah, and I'm look, like, ah! Look over your left shoulder. Start to pull out. Slowly depress the gas pedal. Remove your left foot from the brake. Now, check the speedometer. We're up to 35 miles an hour. Good. 10 and 2. Hands on the wheel. All right, there's a red light. Slowly remove your right foot from the pedal and start to apply the brake. When does it Just become a Bob pressure. Newhart bit? <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, I'm the submarine captain. All right, Norm. I'm going to teach you how to drive. Awesome, let's do and it. And don't give me that bullshit. Let's hypothetically and tentatively agree upon. Let me teach you how to drive, Norm. Okay, I'll do it. You're, you're, you're old enough now. Let me teach you how to drive, okay? Uh, I'm two score and eight. Put... Uh, you what? Two score and eight. I'm 48, but I like oh, to say... Oh, two score and eight. All I like right. to say I'm presidential. Right. Let me, let, me, let me teach you how to drive. Why did I say potatoes wrong? What this, this is how <laughs> stupid I am. You know how stupid I am politically? Hmm. When uh, Remember a long time ago, Dan Quayle spelled potato wrong? Mm-hmm. Everybody laughed at him? Mm-hmm. I thought he spelled it right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> did, you, did you know he spelled mm-hmm. it wrong immediately? Or do you mm-hmm. have... I have trouble with that. No. Word. But I'll tell you the words I, I can spell. Yeah, people have trouble spelling certain words. I can all. spell courage, I can spell self-esteem, and I can spell independence, Norm. <laughs> and that's what I'm going to write on oh, my car. emotional marks a lot board when we get into that vehicle. Oh, I see. You understand? Yeah. I can spell tailpipe. <laughs> <laughs> man great. Norm, we got to give you a man great. Look at that baby. 100% made in America, 100% cast iron, steakhouse quality grilling. Yeah, I'd like grilling. one of those my own self. Right in your own backyard, yeah. Give Norm one of those babies. Oh, this is awesome. He's a carnivore. Thank you, man. 1999 holiday specials. That thing is badass. Not made in Canada, my friend, out of pot metal. That is 100% Detroit cast iron, my all right, exclusive bonus. Every order comes with a heavy-duty Mangrate grill grilling brush with the Adam Carolla Show logo on it, Norm. I know you're going to cherish that. Oh, this man grill is yeah, going to be awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. I saw this on TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Norm McDonald. Norm, what is your uh, – What? give us a website. People can find out up, upcoming dates when you're playing shows, your Twitter account. We got well, I have a Twitter. I have Norm McDonald, and I think I have a, I think I have a uh, website. What would it be? Well, probably be Norm, Norm McDonald, McDonald, I guess. Yeah. Norm oh, McDonald. Look, there yeah. it is. You Norm McDonald. It. You can figure out the comedy tour when he's coming to a town, either by mule or by hovercraft, and not by car, unless he's in the back seat, <laughs> to a town near you. Norm, I'm going to teach you how to drive, but more importantly, I'm going to teach you how to live. <laughs> <laughs> I like the self-righteous snort. <laughs> so until next time, this is Adam Crow for Paul Bryan. Norm MacDonald, Nelson Rosen saying, Mahalo. I let total strangers anally rape me. Follow the Ace Man on Twitter at Adam Carolla. Follow the show on Twitter at Adam Carolla Show.